Pokemon and everybody, my name is Carbon Fiber K9, and we are back here again with Diablo 4. Today we're going to be doing the Necromancer. Uh, yesterday you guys got to see the Sorcerer. Today is going to be the Necromancer. Tomorrow is going to be the Rogue, and Thursday is going to be the Barbarian, and then Friday you guys are going to get a V Rising episode. And the only reason I am uh, altering that upload, uh, as you guys may have seen yesterday, how the Sorcerer was the start of the week instead of the Druid. The only reason I'm doing it that way is because the Druid already had episode 3, and I don't want to put too much focus on the Druid. You all deserve to get episode 3 at the same time, back to back to back, consistently, and I messed that up, so I'm going back and I'm going to be covering all of that stuff to episode 3 for all all five classes since the druid already has episode 3 and he's already level 8 sorcerer now has episode 3 and I got him to level 7 and we did find out some pretty cool things about the sorcerer but now with my seasonal necro and my main eternal necro this necro episode might be lady spaghetti and we won't know until we dive right in so let me hop back over here to the recording side of it hope you guys can see this the druid is level eight as you guys can see i know i just said that but i had the face cam on that's my bad oh well um, but we got to the Sorcerer to level 7 last time, um, and today we'll be working on the Necro with the Seasonal at 54 and my Eternal at 61, and both of these just going, I mean, I, I've got a better build on my 54 than I do on my 61. I'm, I'm fighting shit that I shouldn't be fighting as a level 54. I'm taking on things that are almost like 10 levels ahead of me and I'm just destroying them granted the malignant hearts do make a huge huge difference but the build itself does not rely on those malignant hearts but again I am going to be doing the same thing that I am doing with every character and staying true to we are going to be on paper and field testing everything. So without further ado, let's get right on in to the Necro. All right, so. On our last episode, it looks like we made it to Kiova Shad, and we did not make it to the church. So let's get up here to the church, and then we're going to have to go to Yelizna afterwards, because I know that's where they're going to want me to go. I've done this thing so many times. I've done it on my main necro, my seasonal necro. No, I didn't do it on my seasonal because I skipped the story on my seasonal. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, you'll get what's coming to you. No spoilers. Thank you. All right, so last episode, what did we what did we actually pick up? What do we have? All right, so we're on decompose. That shows how far back I am. But we are running blood surge, which is a good thing. We don't have anything over here yet. Okay. So what I did find out um, in my last episode. Just go ahead and get that out of the way. Um, 
not my last episode, what I found out with my seasonal and with all the changes and everything that came to the Necro, I did very much find out that's thunder. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's just thunder. Yeah, it's just thunder. Lay back down. It's just thunder. It's okay. Good girl. Um, I did find out with my seasonal and my eternal after really, really hard, long, <laughs> eventful hours of working this build. And I, I swear I spent almost four, five, six million on rerolling uh, all my all my abilities and trying to get it down and getting it to getting everything to match up the way that it should and figuring out, you know, the aspects, this and that. And, Oh, it was, it was fun. And then trying to find the items that I needed because not all of the build can be found through dungeons. You know, you don't get all your aspects from dungeons. There's two that you actually need that are from items. And it makes a world of a difference if you get those items. So, on paper, while decompose does seem to be the best option, and in the field, I will honestly say that I did find out I don't have any points in that. Stupid. That hemorrhage was actually a better option, especially with the fortify. Alright, so let me go put that there. Right, and then we have the blood surge with, yep, five stacks to get overwhelming. And here we need to do Blood Mist with Overpower to reduce the cooldown. And the way that I do it, I really have thought about doing the Fortify. But I really feel like leaving a corpse behind is a better option. And it's strictly for corpse tendrils, if anyone's wondering. Um, I also run Iron Maiden with Enhanced and that one, Horrid. So I need two skill points to get there. And there's the ones. Alright, so that's the, the basis of the build. And I don't want to go over, I don't want to just run through it real fast. I know I wasn't, I know I said in the last episode, and those of you who watched the Sorcerer episode, you'll also know that I said that I wouldn't use these until about level 10. But the truth is, with the season out and the fact that I'm late, I don't need you guys falling behind because of my lack. So, well, early game at level 6, you should not have Blood Mist and Iron Maiden and all this other stuff that I have going through, because, I mean, that's, what, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I mean, you're talking 15 skill points. At level 6, you shouldn't have Iron Maiden. You shouldn't have Blood Mist. You just shouldn't. So... Claim, 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 claim. It's all that XP and gold. All right, so you shouldn't have all this extra, uh, all these extra abilities and, and, you know, skill points. But at the same time, if you have beaten the, beaten the story, the campaign, and you play seasonal and you choose to skip the campaign, which is what I did. Because I didn't need to, I didn't feel the need to run back through that entire story all the fuck over again just to get uh, the Mother's Embrace Ring or whatever, or, or whatever it is. 
Well, well, that ring would be nice, yes. It is not. It is not on the top of my list of things to get. Now, with this character, obviously, I will have to go through um, the campaign and the story and get the Mother's Embrace and yada, yada, yada. I will have to do all of that. But what I do want to let you guys know is that you guys shouldn't have to suffer for me being absent and not knowing how to build your character past a certain point. So you're able to keep progressing and you'll be able to come back to this video and find all that. And I don't really see many people doing this step by step, you know, testing it out and, you know, doing all that stuff. They just tell you what to use and they show you a little bit of how it works, but they don't show you everything. And they have a lot of cuts and edits. And I personally, I want to know what happens behind those cuts and those edits. Yeah, it may be a little boring, but I want to know how effective that build actually is. So, for example, that. Three attacks. Granted, yes, that was a lot of essence, okay? That was a lot of essence. I full and well understand that, okay? But three attacks, and I wiped out two frost wings and a fucking bear. And that is not supposed to be there. That was a waste. Who did this? That's supposed to go there. Blood Surge goes there. Here we go. Blood Mist is supposed to go on L2 to match with the potion. Skeletons are supposed to be triangle. Iron Maiden is supposed to be R1. Here we go. Okay. Bingo. That's that's how that's supposed to work. Just in case you guys were curious, this this is how it should be set up. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, that's a whole lot faster than uh, decompose by means of, you know, time to kill. It's a whole lot faster. And it has just about the same amount of damage overall when you match the speed and everything. And the beauty, beautiful part about this is you can do that. Boom. Is that an event? I mean, I do need my skeletons because this build uses them right now. We won't be using them later, just so that we're all on the same page. Okay, so as you can see right here, that this did definitely, oh, I'm at my max ovals, that this definitely, you know, it, it's not the greatest right now. I am missing the passive that I need that turns Blood Mist into what it needs to be. So, just so that we're all on the same page. Blood Mist is supposed to do more than one damage. I'll explain probably in the next episode or two whenever I am able to get the path, the passive that I need in order to make the build work the way that it should. 
then then I will sit down and explain to you guys how it works and why it's so overpowered and it's because of overpower damage if you guys already know how overpower damage works perfect that's great proud of you but if you don't that's just fine but don't dis blood mist just yet i know some of you may already know what it does but blood mist really is over fucking powered Ooh, core skill damage, but I lose intelligence and damage. Yep, and I lose damage. But I get basic skill damage. Not worth it. Right back. And we'll come back to you, and we're looking for a focus. Ooh, immediate blue. Okay, okay. Boop. Right, so that's got 120, and this has got 110. The daggers are daggers are the ones that have 120 on them, aren't they? All right, I'm gonna cut here, and I will bring you guys back when I'm done doing what I'm doing, only because this is it's my bad because I didn't check my ovals before I started, so I apologize. We'll be right back. Womp. Better got something good for me, man. You and me, we're on set. We're we are on thin ice. You and me. You better fucking deliver. Why is there no amulets or rings? This is bullshit. Blue. God damn it. And minus one. Ooh, we are on some serious thin ice here. Serious thin ice. You better watch yourself. Welcome back, guys. How you doing? <sighs> Thought I was going to get something good. No. Anyways. So let's finish going through here. So we do we do honestly see how the rest of the build works. So to explain just a little bit extra, uh, when it comes down here to your curses, if you have a little extra that you can throw in to amplify damage, I definitely would. And the only reason I say that is because it's 4, 8, and then 12, I believe, or maybe 4, 6, 8. Either way, it's multiplicative. So that multiplicative increase or multiplicative percentage increase is going to set your Iron Maiden that you you hit with, that you, you cast, and it has zero essence cost because of enhanced. And no longer cost any essence, but it, you gain five for each enemy cursed. But if it's if the enemy is already cursed, you do not get more essence for it. Now, I am guilty of casting it way more than I need to, but that's because I'm not getting the groups of people that I'm trying to hit with it. But the biggest thing is to remember, though, is that Iron Maiden does give damage. Right? So enemies afflicted by Iron Maiden take 12 to 15 damage each time they deal direct damage, which means it's basically acting like a, a thorns but on a timer 
So it adds thorns to you for, you know, 12 or 15 thorns for 10 seconds. And the higher Iron Maiden is, the more damage gets put outward. And it takes more and more percentages of your of your top damage. And the fact that it doesn't cost essence means that Iron Maiden is your key to staying alive because not only does it generate essence for you and cost no essence, it, it, it takes the essence cost away and gives you essence instead but it also applies basically a timed thorns on you while also getting its damage increased by 20 percent when at least three enemies are afflicted by it so a 20 percent multiplicative means you take 12% and you times it by 20% and ta-da. So I don't know what that is right off hand, but if I had to take a guess, it's one fifth, three, six, nine, twelve, that's that's quarters. So I'd have to say it's probably uh 2.5 because twos would be tens. Maybe a 2.3. So, you say 2 damage, right? You add 2 damage. And that's only if it does 12. You know, so you take the 12. And you add 2. That makes it a 14. But it's multiplicative. So, I'd say closer to about like 20. 20 damage for the thorns. So, when you do this. And you deal 4% increased damage to cursed enemies. Because this is an actual thorns. This will deal more damage in uh, compliance with the curse or the amplified damage that goes with cursed enemies. So the curse is actually an aid more than it is um, live by it. But I do recommend leveling Iron Maiden up all the way. I do highly recommend leveling. I'm talking. Logul. Um, I do recommend uh, leveling Blood Surge all the way up. Hemorrhage I would probably leave right at 2. Only because 32, uh, 30% is right about where you should be with that. Because you don't want it to deal a whole bunch of damage and take away from your other skills. You just need it to deal enough damage that you know it's there. But at the same time, the main reason you're using this is for the blood orbs. And that comes much later in the build. Where right here, for example, after picking up the blood orb, your next hemorrhage also deals damage to enemies around your target and grants two additional essence per enemy hit. So it's even more so of a of a plus one to, to the build. And then you add the Fortify in. Well, the Fortify then works with the Blood Surge because the Blood Surge off of Paranormal overpowers. And overpowering, just to uh, give you guys an idea of how overpowering works. I went right past it. Overpower damage, right? So it's 57.5%, right? So you take that 57.5%. And it goes extra damage granted to skills when they overpower, stacks with the bonus damage inherently granted to overpowers based on your current life and fortify. The bonus damage dealt scales with the skills that, that overpowered and has a base value of 50. So right now I only have like a 7.5% increase, but I'm also only level 7. But you guys are seeing already the output that is that, that Blood Surge has, even without the overpower. Never mind if you include the overpower damage. So let's say, for example, uh, Blood Surge does 100 damage, right? Let's just say it's 100 damage without overpower. And then when you do overpower, instead of doing 100 damage, it will now do 157 damage. And if it's taking values and raising them like it normally does with uh decimal points and fractions and whatnot or not fractions percentages that 57.5 is actually going to be a 58 
when it come when it when it transfers to damage it'll be a 58 instead of a 57.5 so that means instead of dealing 100 damage when you overpower you'll deal 158 damage so when you look at my life at 82 and you think about 158 damage to enemies that have just about the same amount of, as, of life as you, you're just slaughtering everything you come in contact with the entire time. So the beautiful thing here is, oh, I have base scatter prisms, is that it literally is set up to help you no matter what you do. And it attacks all the way up to the edge of the screen. I mean, it's gorgeous. I love getting the groups together and just fucking popping it. Because, I mean, it, it literally is the epitome of don't fuck with me. One tap. Done. And then the essence goes up all by itself. But you know the flip side of it? Is that my skeletons can deal all the damage that they need to. I can just run in circles. Ta-da! And then I just do this. And do that. Pop, pop. I mean, it, it literally is. Like, it, it it's just, it's fucking amazing. Yep, yep, we got defenders. Oh, we also got an ability. Corpse Tendrils. Right, so how this plays into the build, since we do have a little bit of time left, uh, I'm going to try and show you guys how this plays into the build. Because it actually is really, really important. Alright, so one goes down, drag them all in, and then you overpower. So when you get into those groups where there's elites and you know more powerful monsters and stuff like that, protection shrine is perfect for right here. So let's just say uh, well that that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm mean, I'm not complaining, but that it was not supposed okay. Perfect. Boom. And then we pull everyone in, it hits them with a stun, and then you hit the you hit the blood surge and boom, you're done. Now the beautiful thing about uh corpse tendril is once you actually see it does not consume the corpse. So it stuns them for three seconds, doesn't consume a corpse, so that means you can continuously use it. But that's not even the best part. This is the best part right here enhanced enemies who are in range of corpse tendrils are slowed by 50 percent before being pulled which means if they're charging at you and they're about to get pulled they just damn near got stopped in their tracks they're getting pulled then you can run this where they have a chance to drop a blood orb which would help you out tremendously or you can run this where they are made vulnerable random hair my wife so you have the choice of making them vulnerable or getting a blood orb. Personally, I like the vulnerability only because of the 20% increased damage. But I also see the benefits of the blighted with the blood orb. So that's really up to you and how you want to play that. Do you want to get 20% increased damage off of the vulnerability, which may or may not be used all the time? Or do you want to run it with Blood Orb and taking that 35% chance that you get a Blood Orb and the Blood Orb enhances your hemorrhage, but also later on in the build, way later on in the build, it is super beneficial to your character and the build. There's a lot of factors that go into it, and I just ah, I can't wait to show you guys how it actually works. Pull them all in, and then one more, one more blood surge, done, and everyone's gone. 
I just love the the necromancer and and this build in general. It's just the thorns damage itself. I mean, this oh. <coughs> <coughs> It is such a great, great build. Oh. Alright, let's go over here. Tip that waypoint. Let's run up these stairs. Talk to the Knights Garrison. Boom. Go to the mining camp at Pine Hill. Alright, so without further ado, you guys. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. And remember... That I will be continuing these characters in order starting next week. Uh, we will go back with the druid and then follow everything back to back to back on how how I had the upload set to go in the first place. So, and that's more thunder. Um, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate you making it this far in the video. If you do like this content, you like this video, please remember to give a thumbs up. Share it with all your friends. Share it with your family. Share it everywhere. Put it on your social media. I would appreciate it all the same, no matter where you put it. Um, and if you really do like the content, make sure you subscribe because it helps me out. It helps the channel out. And it lets me know that you do want to see more of this content. So... Without further ado, I appreciate you guys, and goodbye!